Hey guys, what's up? Today we're looking at the definition of a partial derivative. We want to know what is a partial derivative, and then we want to know how to compute partial derivatives. So first of all, what is a partial derivative? The partial derivative of a function is really just a rate of change. We know that derivatives are rate of change, so a partial derivative is just, again, a rate of change of a function. So what is the rate of change that we're looking at? Well, what we're going to do to calculate a partial derivative is really just look at one of the variables. That's what partial means. How does the function change as we maybe change the x variable? That would be the partial derivative of f with respect to x. So this notation with the subscript here, f sub x at the point x0, y0 would be the partial derivative of f with respect to the variable x at the point x0, y0. So how does the function change as we change x a little bit, not changing y? So really, what is the function doing as we move along the x-axis? Is it increasing? Is it decreasing? Is there no change? That's the question. And again, if f sub y is defined, that's going to be the partial derivative of f with respect to y. So how does the function f change as we change the y variable? All right, so that's going to be the limit as h goes to 0, y0 plus h, and f of x0 minus f of x0 comma y0 over h. So how does the function change as we change the y variable? So let's try to visualize with this. So here we've got a function z equals x squared minus y squared, and we want to know how does that function change as we change x. So as we look at this in the zx direction, so in the zx direction, let's pick a y value. Let's say the y value right here at the origin. Let's pick that y value, keep that fixed. How does f change as we change the x variable? Well, it looks like the slope is, is negative right here. So here the slope is negative until we get to x equals 0. Once we get to x equals 0, the slope becomes positive. So we have a slope of negative, and then once we get to x equals 0, it's positive. So that's kind of a qualitative understanding of what the slope is doing for our function z equals x squared minus y squared if we let y equal 0. So then if we let y equal 0, that would, be, that would just be the function z equals x squared, and the derivative there is 2x. So that is exactly this function right here. So that we can see that the slope, yeah, this is the function that represents the slope, z equals 2x. Here the slope is negative. So the slope is negative until we get to, oh, x equals 0 right there, and then the slope becomes positive. So this z equals 2x is representing the slope of our function. Now how did we get that? We'll talk about that in a second. But let's look at the y variable. So if we go back to our function, z equals x squared minus y squared, and we look at the y direction. So how does the function change as we change the y variable? Well now we've got x coming at us. y is going off to the right. So there, it looks like our y variable, our slope is positive, 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 and then our slope becomes 0, and then our slope becomes negative, negative, negative again. So if we just let x equal 0 and we stay on the y-axis, it looks like our function is slope positive, slope 0, slope negative. And that would be, well, if we let x equal 0 here, we would have the function z equals negative y squared derivative of negative y squared would be negative 2y, and that's exactly this. We could say it's like a straight line, but it's actually a plane, z equals 2y. We have a positive slope, and then we have a zero slope, and then we have a negative slope from there on. So that's qualitatively what's going on with the function. So that would be the derivative, the partial derivative, with respect to y of this function, qualitatively. Now how do we calculate partial derivatives? All we do to calculate a partial derivative is just treat the other variable like it's a constant. We treat other variables like constants. And that's how we calculate partial derivatives. So let's look at an example. So here we've got an example. It says calculate the partial derivatives f sub x, f sub y, and then um, f sub x, x, so that's another derivative with respect to x, f sub x, y, f sub y, x. If the function here is x squared minus y squared, f of x, y equals x squared minus y squared. So that's the function we were dealing with earlier. So the solution here, f sub x 
what we do is we treat y like a constant. So the derivative here would be 2x minus 0, or just 2x. So that's the derivative of f with respect to x. Just treat the other variables like a constant. f sub y, 0 minus 2y. So negative 2y. f sub xx, just take the derivative, so the partial derivative, this is another notation for partial derivative, partial derivative of this function 2x with respect to x. So that would be 2. So other notations, just a quick note. Another notation for f sub x is partial f partial x. So these are like a d symbol, so it's almost like a d. So it's just a curly d or a partial d. So some people might just say df dx, but um, we should be careful not to confuse that with a derivative in the original sense of single variable calculus. So this is just another notation that we would say take the derivative here with respect to x of this function. So we could say partial f partial x, or in this case partial f partial x partial x. So another way we could write this is partial squared f partial x squared. So that's another notation. Another way we could write this up here is partial f partial x. So these would be all the same as far as computation goes. Now, let's keep going here. Partial f partial xy will take the derivative with respect to y of f sub x. So that would give us, well the notation here would be partial squared f partial y partial x. So it's like a right to left kind of thing, like this partial y is acting on the partial x derivative. So differentiate f sub x with respect to y, we actually get 0, because we're differentiating the function um, 2x with respect to y. So partial partial y of 2x would equal 0, because there's no y in there. That means there's no change when y is changed. The function's the same, regardless of the y value. It doesn't change. So partial fyx is partial derivative with respect to x, of f sub y. So that's again a notation we could say partial squared f partial x partial y. And what we're doing is we differentiate with respect to x the function negative 2y. And that's equal to 0. Now this is interesting because we want to know maybe does this always work out such that partial fx y is equal to partial fyx. And that is the case, usually, if we have something um, called Clairaut's theorem. So this is usually the case um, if Clairaut's theorem applies. So we'll look at Clairaut's theorem. All right, so here Clairaut's theorem says, suppose that f is defined on a disk d that contains the point a, b. If the functions f sub x, y, and f sub y, x are continuous on the disk, then the partial derivatives f sub x, y at a, b is equal to the partial derivative of f sub y, x at a, b. So all you need is that your, your second order derivatives is what we'll call them, f sub x, y, and f sub y, x are continuous, then they will be equal. So it's very rare that you will not have these two being equal unless there's some kind of undefinedness or discontinuity at the point where you want to take these derivatives. So most of the time, yeah, these are going to be equal. So that's what we're so that's what we're looking for when we do partial derivatives. Just treat the other variable like a constant, and then generally Clairaut's theorem is going to apply as needed. And really, the idea behind a partial derivative is the fact that it's um, how the function changes in one particular direction or, or in one particular axis. As you change one of the variables, how does the function change?